If you want to add 25, 30% to your yearly bottom line, to your performance throughout the year, consider. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. Crazy, crazy day. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, again, if you are uh, new to the channel and you like uh, content that is unbiased and purely technical, I would love to have you uh, join our ever-expanding family. Uh, click a like, subscribe to the channel. We go live, well, uploaded uh, Monday through Wednesday. Thursday, I'm off to decompress the mind. And then we do this again on the weekend update. So let's get into the market. Last night, uh, we talked about um, the importance of a couple of levels, right? Uh, we started talking about the S&P 500. Uh, we knew we had to get above uh, this 390 level, right? 390 level and start building above that. We knew that. QQQ we talked about last night, the importance of building above this whole channel here. We talked about that 270.15 level. We knew that. So we were prepared for a possible day two run of confirmation from the post-December uh, jobs number. We were ready for it, right? The Qs, uh, Amazon, Tesla, so forth and so on. And so be it, uh, the market did that, right? The market confirmed uh, pre-market highs. Uh, we had a you know, decent slight little gap up. It confirmed opening range highs. Uh, everything under the sun went absolutely nuts. We'll get, get to the individual pivots in a second. And then things got really, really real, right? Uh, we needed a desperately a close uh, above that level on the SPY. Uh, we needed that close uh, above the 389 level. Everything was looking great. I mean, really, really good. Uh, you know, the spies exploded, the queues exploded. This is an intraday look, right? This is an intraday look on the spies. They got above this whole channel here. They started rallying, started rallying, continued to rally. And then right around 2.30, 2, 2.30, you had, uh, you had Bostic speaking, you had Fed Daily speaking. Again, her, you know, t correct me if you heard this before, they speak way too much, again, all these Fed people, they, they, I'm very really convinced they get, they get paid by the word. But all of a sudden, they kept on reiterating what they already said last week, right? Uh, that they expect to have rates continue to base over 5%. They continue to stay within uh, until 224 or even beyond. And all of a sudden, what the market loved on Friday, that news that made it rally 700 points in the Dow, got spooked out. And the S&P was up 1.5%. And then of the day they went red on the day, and you know that was you know that was a pretty big body blow to the bulls because the bulls reclaimed the 50-day moving average, right? We when I left at 2:30, uh, I went you know I went to the gym, went to the sauna. I was already mapping out my you know my my trading day for tomorrow based on you know based on uh, what we saw and how we were closing and everything was super duper strong. And by the time I got out of the sauna, I got dressed, I you know, turned on my phone, you know, I'm looking at, I'm like, huh? How, how did the Dow go red? How did the S&P go red? So, you know, it was a big blow. I mean, really, really big blow uh, to the bulls. They reclaimed the 50 only to lose it back on the close and now putting in an inverted hammer. If you, uh, for all you guys who are brand new to trading, um, inverted hammer is not a good thing, right? If a hammer is bullish, guess what? Inverted hammer not so much. So the bulls have to, right? They have to do whatever it takes for tomorrow to reclaim back this 390 level. If not, you guys remember what happens when you start building below the 50 day moving average. And this is where the bears uh, kind of reclaimed out the close. The longer we continue to stay below the 50 day moving average, again, it's not a good thing. So the, the primary job for the bulls, no, hella high water tomorrow. I don't care what happens. I don't care who speaks whatever the case may be, whatever the headlines may be, reclaim back that 390 level. The bear's job is to make sure that we continue to build below today's lows, right? If you look at today's lows, uh, we have this uh, 387.67 uh, area on, on the spies, uh, confirming and correlating with the inverted hammer, not good. Cues were running amok, right? You ever hear that expression, running amok? I, like, I actually like saying that. 
right? The queues were going nuts. They reclaimed the 270.15 level, took out the pre-market highs, right? Took out the pre-market highs of 2775. Again, we'll get to the pivots in a second. They went absolutely nuts. I thought they were going to get to the, you know, had a shot at the 274 level. They traded up to 75. But man, oh man, look at this. Look at this reversal back into the close. Here's what the bears need. Here's what the bulls need to do, right? The bulls need to reclaim back. We were, we were literally a stone throws away from retesting back that 50-day uh, moving average, just like the way the spies did. The only problem is we never got, you know, we, we, we were doing $3. You know, we were about $3. And this is not what the bulls wanted. Here's the kind of playing devil's advocate. This is where I don't think it's as clear as day. Like sometimes you look at a chart and you go, oh, the clear as day. You know, the market gave back this area, blah, blah, blah. You know, I'm 100% sell bias, I'm 100% buy bias. Here's where you can play devil's advocate, right? So this is the highest close in the whole formation, right? We talked about 270.15. So this 270.54 is the highest close in this whole formation. The problem is, right, we got rejected off supply here. The spies fell below back the 50-day moving average, and this put an inverted hammer as well. So this is where the spies need to kind of react for tomorrow, right? The spies need to defend this 270 level. Hella high water, right? They need to defend this 270 level because if they don't defend this 270 level, then we go all the way back into the five and 10 day moving average, which is 265-ish. Obviously, any close, the longer we continue to build above the 270 level, this will give us a pretty good understanding that, hey, we're not giving back the 20 day moving average that we reclaim here, especially on today's open. This is a good thing we're building for a test of the 50 day moving average. So going into tomorrow, it's not as clear as day, right? I, and this is, and again, when we talk about having a plan, having a course of action, having an opinion to make sure that you have both sides of the market covered. Yeah, I think going into tomorrow, that applies more than anything else, but at least going into today, you know, when you look at how we close towards the top of the range, at least you had an idea that, hey, I, I think nine out, I think six out of the seven ideas I had for today were to the upside because six out of the seven closed uh, near their upper channels yesterday. But now we have stocks right in the middle of their channel. So it's not going to be an easy thing. It's not going to be one of those days that we're going to get a clear, you know, clear uh, shot, you know, clear path to the goal line. A lot of stocks are in the middle of their channels. So we might need a candle or two for tomorrow to let these things kind of play out a little bit. So it's a very, very prudent way to kind of let the market kind of do all the heavy lifting for us. And if we do start losing the bottom of the range here of today's lows, and we start seeing some ideas that I have uh, for tomorrow, you know, we, we might start looking back to the, to, the, to the downside. So we're gonna have to let the market speak to us tomorrow. There's a very good chance tomorrow, it'll be in, you know, kind of one of these weird days Market can't go higher, market can't go lower, but it's one of those days that are necessary. It's one of those days that are crucial to your development because this is where you let, you know, you 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 let the do, the market do the heavy lifting. It's going to tell you exactly where the high probability next move of the market will be, and this is another point of reference that again, we don't need to guess, right? We don't need to try to figure out what's going to happen. At 2:30 today, everything looked phenomenal, right? I had 35,000 long buys placed for tomorrow. An hour, you know, only an hour later, not so much. So we have to have some long ideas for tomorrow. We have to have some short ideas for tomorrow. One stock that actually held up really well. We talked about Tesla last night in the video, right? It held up really, really well, right? Within, you know, within what, $3 of the highs? Check out this top of the channel. And again, maybe today is the top of the channel. We don't know. But again, this is the whole point of being, you know, being, um, you know, being, being concentrated on both sides of the market. You see the top of the range here? It didn't quite get there today. But if Tesla, you know, and it held up very well, if Tesla could just take out this top of the range here, this thing has room to 33, 34. We did see some pretty aggressive uh, call buying, weekly call buying, and for next week coming in uh, at, at the open. We saw the 125s, we saw the 127s, we saw the 129s, we saw the 130 calls. They were very aggressive, they had a lot of size. But again, it doesn't make a difference if they're, you know, if how big their accounts are and they're betting institutional wise. If it does, if it gets rejected off this top of the channel tomorrow, it's not gonna, it's not gonna mean a difference how much uh, money came into the flow today. So we're definitely, definitely uh, watching. Let me give you guys some ideas uh, for tomorrow, um, just to kind of give you some ideas on both sides of the market. Let me see what I want to give you guys. Uh, yeah, check out Calmine, uh, C-A-L-M. They do something with eggs. <laughs> Who the hell knows, right? Um, but anyway, they do something with eggs. Uh, look at this. You see how many times they held this bottom channel here? 
once, twice, three times, right? If the market starts coming in, matter of fact, one, two, three, four, wow, look at this, all going all the way back to November. Didn't see that. One, two, three, four, five. It held the bottom of the range here five times. If this cow mine finally starts losing the bottom of the range here, uh, this thing could start its next leg down. It looks pretty interesting. Uh, look at FIVE in case the market rallies tomorrow, right? Pretty chart, you know, pretty chart. It was up huge today. It looks like it wants to attack the top of the range here, right? Uh, again, if the market rallies, you have something on the short side, you have something on the long side. Obviously, I'm watching a whole bunch of names that had dead cat bounces, potential rejections today, like a Microsoft, right? So if the market starts caving in, right, you got an invert hammer. I'm going to watch the bottom of the channel there. Uh, a name like, for example, Apple, same thing, right? Apple had a nice dead cat bounce, got rejected off the 20-day supply, put in an inverted hammer. The market starts going down tomorrow again we want to look at this the weakest names the weakest names you guys remember from last week were microsoft or apple right so we want to go with the weakness we want to go with the stocks that are dead cat bouncing and got rejected off supply we don't want to go with the strongest stocks of the market they might pull in but we don't want to go with them we want to go with the one that are wounded not the ones that are, are, are teflon don and bulletproof and that's the easiest way uh to the goal line so let's talk about it man uh crazy aggressive session today uh, till around two o'clock, but you know, this is where we say, guys, the day trading window, okay, uh, the emotional window is between 9.30 in the morning to around 1, 1 1.30 in the afternoon. After one o'clock, you start seeing all these crazy headlines, and it's always one of those situations that th there's a higher probability that you are gonna give back your whole day in the afternoon, they're gonna give, give back your whole day in the morning, right? You ever hear that expression, I just gave back my whole day? It's very rare it happens in the morning. It's always in the afternoon because you have Fed comments, you have political headlines, you have domestic headlines, you have this, you have that. You have so many different things and everything looks great until it doesn't. So it's very, very important. One little tip, and I think I've spoken about this in numerous times throughout the years. If you want to add 25, 30% to your yearly bottom line, to your performance throughout the year, Consider stopping trading after one o'clock, okay? I'm telling you, the channels are going to contract. In the morning, they expand. That's where you're getting the ferocious moves. Uh, and whatever you like in the afternoon, you're gonna love in the morning. So if you could be disciplined enough to not trade in the afternoon, you're gonna be shocked uh, at your year end results. If you are trading in the afternoon, you know, risk 10, 15% of your day. Nobody should ever give back half their day. Nobody should ever give back their full day. Again, you're a function in business like every other business on the planet. Your goal is to, to, to leave with more than you came from. And obviously, if you know the highest probability of risk is in the afternoon, why sit there and give yourself exposure? Just wait for the next day. So you had a massive, massive move here uh, in the morning. Crazy moves here. So here is Tesla. If opens under 115, use that as the pivot. If it opens above, it needs to confirm uh, 1880. It, it opened around 117 confirmed 1880 here was tesla right here was tesla you can see it on the 60 minute view right so tesla opened up right here right this this 18 area it finally confirmed 1880 went from 1880 all the way into the 23 and a half area really really good move but more important you have this top of the channel here that we spoke about a couple of minutes ago if it confirms this tomorrow uh, you have a lot of really good upside. Uh, Amazon, beautiful move, uh, needs to establish new base, 87, uh, 87, 87, 40. Here was Amazon. Here was Amazon, Con confirmed this whole range here. You see this whole range here, 87, 87, 40s. It controlled this whole range here, opening range highs around the 86, uh, 87, 60, 70s. And the stock went right into supply at 89, uh, 40s. Gorgeous, gorgeous move there. Uh, as well. Remember we were talking about grab, we were along this thing for five days. It finally broke out today, finally, right? 360 needs to confirm. Here was grab, right? Here was grab. It finally got above the 360 level. I started talking about this thing about two, two, uh, two or three updates ago. Finally confirmed 360, traded right into the 380s. Highest close in this whole formation. If this thing can just get above the 385, 387 level, maybe get a next leg up. A beautiful move there as well. Uh, Apple, beautiful move. Uh, 130. You can see how aggressive everything was at the open. Uh, 130, 65, 130, 131 needs to confirm. Here was Apple, right? So it took out the 130, 65. Here's the 131, the highest channel into supply and traded right into that 133, 40s. 
uh, supply before getting rejected. Uh, NVIDIA, I missed. Um, this was definitely the biggest move of the day. Uh, 152.50 rejected twice pre-market uh, needs to build. Uh, here was NVIDIA. It took out the 52.50, 53 level, and look what it did. All it did was put up a seven, eight dollar candle. That's it. Other than that, I didn't miss anything. <sighs> right, so that's that. Uh, Square, I don't think it did anything. I think I think Square went up a little bit. I didn't trade any Square. Um, it took out the 70, yeah, it went up like 50, 60 cents. Not much there. Uh, Q's absolutely exploded. I thought they could get to 74. They got to 75. Uh, 270, 75 needs to build here with the Q's, right? So it gapped up, reclaimed. Here is the pre-market channel. It reclaimed this pre-market channel, 270, 73, and just went absolutely bonkers into this 274, 275 level. It's a great day, really, really good day. Uh, but more important now is what happens next. And because we had such a nasty pull uh, into the close and bunch of inverted hammers, like I said a few minutes ago, we're gonna need the market to do the heavy lifting for us, maybe get a little bit more information, maybe get so much more clarity after the 10 o'clock channel. And remember, the key is to let the market speak to you, okay? Don't tell the market what you need it to do. Listen to what the market tells you it wants you to do. So guys, have a great night. Stay blessed, stay healthy, and with God's help, we'll see you all tomorrow. Take care.